This week, a history lesson following a big buck through his ears into his prime and the young fellow that set out to hunt the deer. Thanks to COVID and online learning, time was on our side. Cole can't talk right now because he is uh, just finishing up his driver's ed class. Probably shouldn't tell his teacher that he's in a blind right now. And time finally brought an encounter. But we were about to learn that not every hunt follows our plan. We've been here for a good four or five hours today and we're about 800 yards into it. So it's not looking real good. Millions of deer hunters had a field each fall, and for many, for many, this is the goal, the dream. There's a reason that a big mature whitetail is the most sought after game animal in the world and the hardest to get. We live our lives hoping for an encounter with them, documenting them. We teach our children so they can share the appreciation and carry on the tradition. You put the time in, the work, the practice, and live the lifestyle just to spend time in the woods with these incredible animals and we're no different. We had a field with the millions of others each fall, hoping that when it's all over, we can share the story of a legend. Man, it's awesome I'm gonna get to hunt these deer every Absolutely. year. Follow these deer for years like this and pick sheds off them. And gorgeous, gorgeous deer. Stealth Cam presents Canadian Whitetail. Brought to you by Ozonics, Undetectable, Undeniable, New Archery Products, Hunt with Confidence, Monster Meal, Attraction, Nutrition, Results. Muddy, serious gear for serious hunters. Excalibur crossbow, different for a reason. Glendale 3D targets, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the world. Hunter specialties, serious hunting tools. Boyd's hardwood gun stocks, better with Boyd's. Nocturnal lighted knocks, switch on accuracy and let it glow. Heater body suit, number one in cold weather hunting gear. Raculator, score your trophy fast, easy and accurate. Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces and by Stealth Cam. Proven reliability, proven quality, proven performance. Watching bucks mature, reach their prime, and following them is something that we love, and we're so fortunate to live in a place where we're able to do that. And this week, we're loading up to head out to set up on one extra fancy buck. In 2016, as a two-year-old, you just never know what the future may hold for this young fella. 2017, at three, he grew modestly, though not substantially, and kept that tight curl to his beams, with his right brow being longer than the other. 2018, at four, the only season we did not film, he had his best growth yet, sweeping curled beams and still the stronger right brow. 2019, while headed towards his prime, there was not much change except better G4s and his strong brow switched to the left, something that we see happen often. 2020, a six-year-old, mature, and his best growth yet, though marginally, we often see deer peak at seven, eight, or nine years old. This year in 2021, we were anxious to see if he'd survive the winter and what seven years may bring for the buck, and we were able to pick back up on him in June. And it was quickly apparent in June and July, this would be his best year yet and why I'd been loading up to go set up on the deer. We'd been putting up a Hawk Octagon semi-permanent blind with a huge amount of room. The setup this time of year, it's my favorite. Setting the stage, playing your best hand to see if come fall, if you cash in with a close-up encounter, or fold and go home broke at the end of the season.
After all the finishing touches, returning 10 days later to check the stealth cam, he was still there regularly and growing like crazy. This was definitely the year that we wanted to target him, and we had just the young fellow in mind that might want to give it a try. This segment has been brought to you by Nocturnal Lighted Knox. String activated. Simple. Switch on accuracy and let it glow. Nocturnal Lighted Knox. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by Block Archery Targets, the world's number one archery target. Halo Optics, premium rangefinders. Tacticam, share your hunt. The Buck Bomb, natural and synthetic lures. Hawk, hunt from above or attack from the ground. AAE, quality and dependability in all our products. Black Eagle Arrows, superior carbon technology. And by Cyclops Lights, get out of the dark. This segment is brought to you by AAE. Innovation and integrity is in our blood. Quality and dependability is in our products. September 1st, the season opener, and young Cole was taking a few last practice shots before heading out. Though with conditions all wrong for the spot that we had set up for the buck, you can't set out opening day, and Cole was headed to one of our plots with Joe to sit for the evening. that I thought might tempt Cole was an older, extra funky, non-typical, heavy beams and one crazy side. He was a very cool deer. Once settled in, it doesn't take long for the deer to begin moving. But day one proves to be fairly slow with just a couple of young bucks, and with conditions still poor for the other spot, Cole would return to the plot tomorrow. Tonight would bring high winds and spooky deer, but later that evening, Cole would get a look at the non-typical. A cagey old buck is not until last light before the deer makes his way to Cole. Who, after getting a look, Cole elects to pass. Leaving to hunt elk, Cole would miss the next several days, though when back everything was perfect to hunt the original buck. In and settled with Cole, and uh, it's been a pretty slow hunt for you so far. I've seen a couple medium bucks, but we got a good win tonight. We're in a really good spot. So actually we have two days of good wins, and I got a good feeling for Cole, so we'll see as long as the wind doesn't blow us away. It's past the middle of September and it's 32 degrees Celsius, which I don't know what that is in American, but it's hot. Odd for this time of year, but we'll see. Another very windy night. However, Steve and I were confident it should only take a couple of sits for Cole to get a look at the buck, but you know what they say about best laid plans. Fairly slow evening with the only buck being this handsome up and comer. However, we'd be back tomorrow. Well, Cole's back. I promised him he'd shoot a deer here yesterday. But uh, a little nicer night tonight. It's sunnier. No hurricane winds, so I think it's probably a pretty good night.
after some guests of the wrong species leave, this young buck makes an appearance. But another slow evening with the only other deer, this medium 5x5 on the left in the heavy brush. This segment of Canadian Whitetail has been brought to you by Boyd's Hardwood Gunstocks, the world's largest manufacturer of aftermarket hardwood and laminate stocks. Boyd's offers stocks for over 1,200 firearm models, so you can make every gun better with Boyd's. This segment of Canadian Whitetail has been brought to you by Glendale, the only 3D target with a replaceable four-sided core. Glendale, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the universe. Recently getting settled last night was a little bit better, but still no shot at the big guy, so Cole can't talk right now because he is uh, just finishing up his driver's ed class. So uh, probably shouldn't uh, tell his teacher that he's in a blind right now, but you got to go when it's time. Online learning was working in our favor, giving Cole more time in the blind. Though again, more visitors of the wrong species. The moose leaving with time left gave us hope, but Cole's slow hunt would continue. When following the moose, cattle would settle in for the rest of the evening. Tonight again, it was slow, producing just this up and comer. We were only eight days in, which is nothing, but so slow made us wonder if we should be rethinking our plan. Well, we're back in with Cole, and uh, he's having a bit of a rough go here. We thought we were playing our best card sitting here, and uh, haven't had a whole lot of luck. But I don't think we've messed the stand up just yet. I think we're uh, still okay. Cole still looks like he's having fun. And uh, the buck's still on trail camera. We had a bad full moon, we've had good winds though. We've had five straight days in here, so we're back today. It was 29 Celsius yesterday, it's 15 today. So that should help get the moving a little bit, but really windy. But I still think we're okay here. I don't think we've burnt the stand out or done any damage. We just haven't had any good sets yet. Another windy evening, but tonight, when it died off, I couldn't believe it. When I looked over and the first deer we would see was Cole's big target buck. Everything was going just right, but it's never over until it is. Cole begins to get ready, and the big buck sees or hears something and nails us. Finally, some luck for Cole as the buck decides everything is okay and carries on closer. Stepping out perfect broadside, Cole begins to draw. And again, the buck nails us. Now two quarter towards to shoot and knowing we're done for this time, I make sure Cole stays ready as the buck will likely turn back to leave. And when he does, I tell Cole to draw, knowing I could stop him broadside as he leaves. There you go. We didn't film right away after Cole shot, because uh, right when you were lifting your bow, he either heard something or something made him look at the blind and he caught something and it made him really nervous. So right from when he crossed the fence to my shot, he was pretty, pretty nervous jumper. And that's when he turned the head out of here. I knew, I knew that that was Cole's chance to shoot. So those chances are few and far between sometimes, but uh, he was standing behind the black bar of the blind here when Cole shot. So we could just see the back end of him. The shot was forward and it looked low to me, but Cole thought it looked a little higher than, than I thought. So uh, it's definitely not ideal. We're just gonna leave it a little bit here. It's early 
and then we'll take a look at his arrow. We've seen his arrow went right through, but uh, maybe a tricky one. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate, learn, set up, hunt. Brought to you by Muddy Outdoors. A deer's hearing is amazing, and those of us that spend a lot of time in the woods know this. But let me stress, amazing. Especially while outfitting, we've seen it often that a hunt can be blown before anyone even knows it or ever knows it. Big old bucks don't usually let you know that they've busted you, and because their hearing is better than our sight, they can often pick up a noise and leave without us ever seeing or knowing that it happened. And that's why being quiet on stand is so imperative, and not just at prime time, at all times while on stand. Mature bucks are famous for staging up, getting close to edges or feet and hanging up. And what they're doing is constantly sweeping the area for danger, looking and listening. We've had big old bucks come to within 30 yards and stage up for two to three hours before moving the next 20 yards to a field or feed. Two to three hours, and that's just the encounters that we've noticed. Any noises, clangs or bangs in that time period and the hunt for that deer at that spot is likely over. We talk a lot about scent control, scent reduction and elimination, and it's very important. But just as important is ensuring that every moment on stand is as quiet as possible, as that big buck could quite literally just be waiting for a reason to bust. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Muddy Outdoors. Create your own muddy moment. This segment has been brought to you by The Raculator, the only electronic scoring tool in the world. Built for all antlered game, The Raculator guides you step by step to score your trophy fast, easy, and accurate. Available only at raculator.com. The big bucket busted us twice. And now I knew Cole's only shot was for me to stop the buck as he was leaving. <coughs> there was discrepancy on where the arrow hit, but an agreement in either case that it was marginal. Well, Cole's arrow did go right through, and uh, there's a little bit more blood on it than I thought there'd be, so the shot might have been a little bit higher. We're gonna take a look here, but. We tracked him through the little corner of this bush here, and uh, he bled. There's a few spots where he bled pretty good there, but it just shut right off. So we're just going to get out of here because uh, blood's pretty dark, eh? Looks kind of like lower brisket or kind of what we thought. So we're going to give him a little bit of time and and uh, make a plan from there. Not ideal, but we'll get him. We held hope that if we left the buck and didn't jump him that the morning might bring better news, though it didn't. Well, it's not going a whole lot better today. Blood pretty much shut right off and we're just finding bloody foot tracks. We've been here for, oh, a good four or five hours today and we're about 800 yards into it, so it's not looking real good. Another day and nearly a mile of tracking passed, but we were still headed back the next morning. A little bit tough looking for a deer when you're not uh, when you're not even certain he's dead. So our initial thought was uh, that it might not be fatal, but but it might be, and that's kind of the always the problem. And uh, we keep looking until we know one way or the other. So so hopefully today is a little better. Unfortunately, we're probably down to uh, looking for birds today. There's uh, no blood trail left. We know kind of the general direction he was headed, but. Uh, as it goes on, you really start to run out of options. And options were getting thin. We had tracked 1,200 yards from the shot now, and today, again, provided no better information if the deer was alive or dead. So we were headed back tomorrow. Well, it was day three looking for Cole's deer, and uh, we were pretty pretty sure he actually might survive. Um, we didn't know if he'd be lethal or not. Steve and I were going for a little bit of a walk. We seen one raven and one magpie flip in out of the bush. Steve walked over about 50 yards, and uh, there he is, so definitely not how a guy wants to find him, but not much else you can expect three days later. So we're just gonna call Cole over here. Your biggest deer, hey? Yeah, real massy. He's heavy, isn't he? Well, that kind of didn't go as planned, hey? Yeah. Well, he's a pretty phenomenal buck, and we got to watch him for quite a while, and uh, Cole, you had to put some time in on him, eh? Yeah. And then a grueling three days to get him, but uh, that happens, and we weren't even sure if he'd be dead. I'm glad we got him. Though not the ending that we would have written, there was still satisfaction to watch Cole cut his tag. 
Not every hunt is perfect, few are, but it doesn't change that we were proud of Cole, or the honor and thankfulness that we have having been able to watch this gorgeous buck for all these years. This segment is brought to you by Wild Edge, makers of the ultimate climbing system, the stepladder. Safely design your climb in any tree with the most versatile, lightweight, and compact climbing system, the stepladder. To book your own dream hunt in northern Saskatchewan, contact us at Canadian Whitetail Outfitters. Canadian Whitetail is also brought to you by these fine sponsors. Stay up to date with Dean and the team by following us on Instagram, liking us on Facebook, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. For Canadian Whitetail gear and apparel, information, and newsletters, visit CanadianWhitetailTV.com. For past episodes and never seen content, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or search for us wherever you stream.